his glory shall be revealed, he may be glad also with exceeding joy. He's letting us know that if they suffered here as Christ, that we suffer as Christ did, that we shall be hereafter glorified with him. The Bible says those if we suffer with him, we shall also reign with him. So the 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 writer is basically giving us the idea that that as if you are a partaker of Christ's suffering, if you're called by the name of Jesus Christ, if we're standing under the name, under the banner of Jesus Christ, that there will be days that you will, we will have to put, uh, that we will have to deal with fiery trials. The third thing that the writer, he speaks of the future glory. The Bible says in the book of Romans, uh, the 8th chapter, the 18th verse, for I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared to the glory which shall be revealed in us. That there is a better day that the whole, the scriptures point us to, always point us ahead. The scriptures rarely point us backwards as much as back, the scriptures point us ahead that there is a culmination to our labor, that there, our labor won't be in vain, that there is a, 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 a day that we'll come through, a day that we'll break through, a day that we'll get all that we, uh, we endeavor. And the fourth thing that I thought that the writer penned that it was an honor to suffer for the cause of Christ. Uh, you know, we everybody wants to say how much faith that they have, but has your faith ever been tested? The Bible says that if you faint in the in the day of adversity, then your strength is weak. Strength is not uh, ascertained when you're not under struggle. The, 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 using the scriptures as a litmus test, you are, you are strong when you have shown yourself strong in the process of a struggle. You will go through some struggles in your life. Uh, I told someone a couple months, the Lord said to me that, Steve, sometimes when you're going through the worst struggle that you've ever seen, then one of the enemy's greatest weapons is that he makes it look like everyone else is living in the land of no struggles. But going back to our text, it's talking about as strange as it seems. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial, which is to try you. The thing that you're going through, that problem in your household, that problem in your job, that you're not an anomaly, you're not born under a bad sign, you're not born out of season. He said, think it not strange. Basically, the writer says that when you sign up for this Christian team, that these are things that you will go through. They come with the territory. Second Timothy, uh, the Bible says, uh, uh, even before we get to Second uh, Timothy 3 and 12, it's here in Psalm 34, verse 19. It says, many are the afflictions of the righteous. He said, many, if he said many are the afflictions of the wicked, or many are the afflictions of all men, he said, many are the afflictions of the righteous. If you want to stand and be righteous, you're going to go through. You're going to go through war clouds in the east and storm clouds in the west. You're going to be uh, afflicted in your body. People are going to hate you for no reason at all. He said, many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the writer did, the psalmist didn't leave us there. He said, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. This is sometimes when you're being, being beaten from pillar to post that God promises that he'll deliver you from out of them all. 2 Timothy 3 and 12, the words up here. It said, Yea, and all that will live godly shall suffer persecution. If you sign up for the holiness team, if you walk under the banner of living right, then you're going to go through. And this writer was right at a time where people were being slain for the cause of Christ. Beloved, think it not strange. He said, this isn't an anomaly. This is a, something that, that is coming out of sight. This comes with the territory. When you sign up for this team, I, I remember when the church used to not run for words like sacrifice and long-suffering and endurance and, and perseverance, that this is a time where, where all that time is winding up. We are in a battle. Why are we not ready to fight? Uh, because I was thinking of John 16, 33. Jesus even said this. Jesus said in John 16, 33, he said, In this world ye shall have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. When we're called to be more than conquerors, how can you be, ever be a conqueror if you've never been through a battle? I, I told someone that, that, that when, when, literally when someone wants to know how can we ever know that God can heal if we've never been sick? How can we ever know that God's been a way maker if we never needed a way that had to be made? How can we ever know that God is a financial deliverer if you've 
never been in a tight fix with your finances when your money is funny and your change is strange and God still shows up. See, which that beloved think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Uh, you will be tested by a fiery trial. Basically what the writer is telling us is that we need to trust all of it with God. I, I, I'm telling you that yeah, you know, you walk, we walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You don't have to fear no evil because God is with you. See, I, I'm saying that you can fight uh, the horns of hell. You can and literally fight against all the forces of the enemy because you've got God with you. Trust all of this with God. See, what, what I'm saying is that we should trust God even when hell is throwing everything and the kitchen sink at us. That it, he said, think about strange concerning the fiery child. So you will be attacked. He, the enemy, the devil, is the God of this world, little G. So when you're walking and walk against this world, you're not being moved by best flesh. You're not being moved by sight. You're walking by the word of God. You will go through. Still talking about strange and disease. The writer is telling us not to be troubled at persecutions and afflictions as a new and strange thing. You will go through. Everybody in the house hall of faith in Hebrews 11, they went through. They, they were not, they didn't have every day this Sunday. I think it's the way that we've marketed the message, and I thank God for the abundance of, of the word and excitement about the word, but I think sometimes that we send out the wrong message, that if you hold to the tenets of the word, that you won't ever go through, that you won't ever have a bad day. But that is far from scripture. The Bible is full from cover to cover with the afflictions, problems, trials, and tests and persecutions that the work people of God had to endure for righteousness' sake. Uh, uh, here, again, it said, he was talking to us as though some new strange thing has befallen us. Somebody is going through what you're going through. If you're being beaten from pillow po to post, we, we want to put a badge on you, but somebody has gone through that and worse. If you look through the hall of faith, there, there are people who were sown and son for the gospel's sake. And I don't care what you're going through right now. Very few of us are actually getting our head separated from our shoulders. We're not being sawed in half for the cause of Christ. Somebody has gone through the battle that you're going through. This all comes with the territory. And once again, I'm talking about strange and deceit. The first reason the Lord does not want us to confuse us with his fire, but it's to purge our impurities. you got to think some of the things that we've gone through that is getting off some of our rough edges, some of the fiery trials. God says test to promote you, while the enemy will send tribulations to, to demote you. See, what, what, what I'm telling you is that you're going to be tried. What man goes up on the airplane that goes up 20 to 50,000 feet in the air, um, and what man wants to go up on one that and it's never been tested? Then you have to be tested. You will have some fiery trials and tests in this life. First Peter, the first chapter, verse 6, it reads as follows. Where it greatly rejoice, though now for a season it need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations. Oh, this is just telling you, child of God, that you won't go through just once or twice. You're going to go through sometimes in your finances, sometimes in your body, sometimes in your family, and sometimes on the job at the same time. This is a day that if we're in a fight, that you need to be dressed to fight. You need to put on the whole armor of God. The devil knows that time is winding up and he's working his plan. He's coming at you from everywhere. The Bible says in John 10 and 10 that the thief cometh not but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But the word of God says that as you know, Jesus talking, he said, but I am come that you might have life and that you might have it more abundantly. So what I'm telling you, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for we know that your labor is not in vain. Yes, we're in a fight. We're in a fight from early in the morning to early at night. But I'm telling you that strange as it seems that we need to put our trust in the master's hands. Going back to what Peter said.